If an underpass was constructed such that a bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a beach, or it would have been, uh, in New York was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by, but that obviously reflects racism that went into those design choices. Um, I don't think we have anything to lose by confronting that simple reality, and I think we have everything to gain by acknowledging it and then dealing with it, which is why the reconnecting communities, that billion dollars, is something we want to get to work right away. I tell you, these... Marxists in the Biden administration would never let a crisis go to waste. Pete Buttigieg, the transportation secretary who hasn't done much in terms of transportation safety, says that the reason why bridges like the one in Baltimore collapsed after the barge hit it was because of racism. There was racism in the design choices that led to it not being structurally sound because obviously it's carrying black and brown people. If an underpass was constructed such that a bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a beach, or it would have been, uh, in New York was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by, but that obviously reflects racism that went into those design choices. How does a bridge being constructed, I know a lot of bridges down south that are constructed low. How is a bridge being constructed low racism? Please, somebody, if someone is a structural engineer in a community, please let me know because this is the first I've heard of someone using racism in the design of a bridge. Please, somebody, let me know. Um, I don't think we have anything to lose by confronting that simple reality. And I think we have everything to gain by acknowledging it and then dealing with it, which is why the reconnecting communities, that billion dollars, is something we want to get to work right away. Go look at this. So what Pete Buttigieg is saying is that we're going to rebuild this bridge in the image of the structural racism reality that we perceive. In other words, you know, this bridge was called the Francis Scott Key Bridge. They may rename this bridge and call it, since it's Baltimore, they may call it The Wire based upon that show that used to come on HBO, which I never watched, but I heard about that show called The Wire. They may call it the Lamar Jackson Bridge after the quarterback for the Ravens. Why don't you call it the Ray Lewis Bridge? Everybody in Baltimore loves Ray Lewis. So just call it the Ray Lewis Bridge. Watch. I bet they try to rename this bridge. And for those of you who have not seen it, it was a tragic, tragic accident that happened overnight the night before where a barge ran into one of the pillars on the bridge and the bridge collapsed. While you were sleeping, shocking video today out of Baltimore. This is all that is left of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, one of the main traffic routes through the city. And it was hit by a container ship. You can see how that collision caused that bridge to snap in several places. Look at that there, plunging to the river below in just a matter of seconds. Now, what we know here is that construction workers were on the bridge at the time of the collision. Emergency responders say that they are searching for at least six people. NBC's Ryan Nobles has the latest. Search and rescue efforts continue here at the site of the bridge collapse in Baltimore, Maryland. The Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed after a container ship, a thousand foot container ship, collided with the base of the bridge, collapsing the bridge in just a matter of seconds. And since that moment at 1.30 in the morning, rescue crews have been frantically searching uh, for a group of construction workers that fell into the water as the bridge collapsed. At this point, rescue workers believe that they are searching for six people. They did rescue two people from the icy waters. One of them sent to the hospital. The other uh, is okay. At this point, uh, the investigators believe that this was a terrible accident, that something went wrong with the container ship, and they say that the crew on board the ship actually signaled back to the shore that they were having a problem, and that allowed them to stop vehicular traffic over the bridge, and they believe at this point that there are no cars or vehicles of any kind that actually fell into the water, and that meaning that there aren't survivors trapped in cars underneath the river water. Here's what's happening now. The search and rescue operation is our top priority. Ship traffic in the Port of Baltimore has been suspended until further notice, and we'll need to clear that channel before the sh ship traffic can resume. The Army Corps of Engineers is on the spot and is going to help lead this effort to clear the channel. The Port of Baltimore is one of the nation's largest shipping hubs, 
and I've been there a number of times as a senator and as a vice president. It handles a record amount of cargo last year. It's also the top port in America for both imports and exports of automobiles and light trucks. Around 850,000 vehicles go through that port every single year, and we're going to get it up and running again as soon as possible. 15,000 jobs depend on that port, and we're going to do everything we can to protect those jobs and help those workers. The bridge is also critical to, for travel, not just for Baltimore, but for the Northeast Corridor. Over 30,000 vehicles cross the Francis Scott Key Bridge on a daily basis. <clears throat> it's virtually, uh, it's a, well, it's one of the most important elements for the economy in the Northeast and the quality of life. My transportation secretary is there now. As I told Governor Moore, I've directed my team to move heaven and earth to reopen the port and rebuild the bridge as soon as humanly possible. And we're going to work hand in hand with the support of Maryland to support Maryland and whatever they ask for. We're going to work with our partners in Congress to make sure the state gets the support it needs. It's my intention that federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. And I expect to, the Congress to support my effort. This is going to take some time. The people of Baltimore can count on us, though, to stick with them at every step of the way until the port is reopened and the bridge is rebuilt. You know, we're not leaving until this job gets done. So Joe Biden and his team are on it. This is where the federal government should be involved. The federal government should be involved in things like this, not other things, not social issues, not trying to dictate to you how to live your life. That's not the role of the federal government. The federal government shouldn't be investigating Christians and trying to silence Christians when it comes to speaking out about life. These are the things that the federal government should be about. And the fact that the transportation secretary will use this strategy to say that our infrastructure was based in racism is horrible. Black people, they will use any and every situation to reinforce this notion that this country is systemically racist. Look at their ploy. Look at their trick. Look at their tactic. They are profiting off of the atrocities of the past and they have no plans to correct it, but just use it for political power. 